Stalker alert at Royal Wedding. What does one expect to happen? Hello everyone, I'm Chris Williams and welcome to my video blog for Monday the 18th of April 2011. So yes, as you just saw at the start, it was on the front of one of today's newspapers that uh, the police, or rather specifically the Fixated Threat Assessment Centre in the Metropolitan Police, I'll speak more about them in a moment, they are warning that apparently obsessive stalkers are going to turn up at the royal wedding between Prince William and Kate Middleton. Well of course, at the end of the day, Prince William and Kate Middleton are just ordinary everyday people, so anyone from the public who goes to uh, line the streets outside that wedding is obviously going to be rather obsessive <laughs> uh, because uh, what the Fixated Threat Assessment Centre is saying is that there are a handful of people who are apparently planning to abduct Prince William or Kate Middleton. I think it's unlikely such people who might have such ideas that might have been uh, uh, detected by this assessment centre, they're probably just loners in their bedrooms, daydreaming about uh, a variety of things. And indeed, I've got upon Wikipedia at the moment about what the Fixated Threat Assessment Centre is. I didn't previously know they existed. Created in October 2006, 10 members of staff uh, uh, in uh, an area the Metropolitan Police in London, and they apparently uh, keep an eye out for obsessive behaviour uh, uh, depicted by lone individuals against politicians, the royal family, famous celebrities, and in some instances, private individuals. This is quite fascinating, so I'll read out a bit more from Wikipedia about this organisation. Apparently, 83% of individuals who uh, pass by the Fixated Threat Assessment Centre, 83% of them are found to be suffering from a form of psychosis, and it's the aim of the service not to subject the individual to uh, legal punishment, but to assist them uh, with their mental health. Applying the majority of people uh, who are uh, who are detected by this group, uh, they don't necessarily reside in psychiatric hospitals, but they do receive uh, care in the community. And it goes on to say, but I read a bit of it. I read a bit of this before I start this blog. A lot of them are, uh, are uh, a lot of them think that they know the celebrity uh, on an intimate basis. Of course, that is not necessarily the case. Uh, hence, delusions uh, is one of the uh, key traits of such people. Many of them, uh, where politicians are concerned, many of them do feel a grievance towards a politician. So it's the job of the uh, Fixated Threat Assessment Centre to determine if the person uh, is going to be dangerous towards the p individual who they are targeting. In most instances, the person lacks the capacity 
to carry out any threats that they might make. But nonetheless, the police have to have a word with the individual to make sure that they are closely monitored so that although they are free to express any uh, aggravation that they feel, uh, measures have to be taken to make sure that they are not able to act on any uh, aggressive uh, any aggressive threats that they make. Um, uh, in addition to 10 full-time police officers working for the service, there are three full-time senior forensic nurses, a full-time senior social worker, and a number of senior forensic psychiatrists and psychologists, all of whom are supplied uh, from uh, uh, Barnet, Enfield and Haringey NHS Trusts, and also Oxley NHS Foundation Trusts as well. And it goes on to say that a majority of this work, uh, a majority of the patients uh, that they come across are obsessed with the royal family. Hence, this newspaper article that I'm talking about today is suggested. Uh, some of these most severe cases are detained by police under section 136 of the Mental Health Act 1983. That's for their own sake and also uh, if it's felt that they are going to pose a big danger to their target. Um, of course, they are subsequently then uh, assessed uh, under the referral that Section 136 of the Mental Health Act leads to. Uh, right, here's a statement from the former Minister of State for the Home Office, Tony McNulty. He made it. He made the statement in June 2007. Uh, the uh, FTAC does not detain people in psychiatric hospitals when it encounters an individual in need of mental health care. It alerts their general practitioners and psychiatrists who then provide appropriate help under existing legislation. Uh, it may use uh, police powers under Section 136 of the Mental Health Act to take a person who appears to be suffering from a mental disorder and in immediate need of care or control into a place of safety. They are then examined by a registered mental uh, medical practitioner and interviewed by an approved social worker not associated with the FTAC. So it's all about providing care to the obsessive. The obsessive does not get punished by the law. They are given help to overcome uh, their psychosis. Uh, and indeed, this Wikipedia article does go on to say that uh, it is imperative that uh, the individual is in a place of safety. And that meant there are 27 such people uh, who are in a place of safety that is recognised. 86% um, have a psychotic illness, 57% of the same group end up in hospital, 26% treated in the community, and of 80% of cases, the, the, there's a low risk of the person uh, committing any further, uh, any more excessively violent uh, threats. Um, and it goes on to say that, uh, I read about this in the Big Express today, but it says that the Mail on Sunday in May 2007 criticised the setting up of this uh, organisation. Uh, but um, it's my own personal opinion that um, we saw in the news today that uh, one lady was uh, convicted of harassing a footballer, Rio Ferdinand. She thought that she knew him to speak to on a social basis. Mr. Ferdinand says that he's never met it before. So such a woman like that clearly deluded. She could be a threat to Ferdinand eventually. She could be a threat to herself. Uh, she came across as normal from the pictures that uh, I saw of her on the internet. So she's clearly in need of help rather than punishment. She might genuinely believe that she knows Rio Ferdinand, but she's clearly mistaken. And... Uh, it's fair to say, in this celebrity culture, there's quite a lot of this going on now where people become obsessed with celebrities because they offer hope to the individual who might be going through some kind of uh, distress in their life. So they then uh, become fantasists and then engage in a spot of um, uh, escapism from their problems. But it does say on this Wikipedia article that um, there is the risk that... Uh, that uh, political activists could fall victim to this fixated threat assessment centre where if their protests 
are to sustain and uh, they might uh, be monitored by the Metropolitan Police uh, to see uh, if they pose a risk to national security. I know that Jack Straw, the now former Home Secretary, he was apparently tr attracted by MI5 when he was the president of the Students' Union because they thought that uh, he posed a risk to national security. And same with Peter Hain, the now former Welsh Secretary, he was tracked by uh, MI5 when he was uh, campaigning against uh, the apartheid in uh, South Africa. So um, I agree that uh, people who are ill should receive help to be looked after, but I don't think that people who are not ill, who are engaging in legitimate protest, I don't think that they should be uh, accused of being uh, uh, psychiatric cases. And uh, I don't think that uh, it would be appropriate for them to uh, uh, be stigmatised. They might be uh, complaining about something that they are legitimately entitled to complain about, but with this they might uh, be accused of uh, being uh, mentally unstable and unsafe to be uh, with the normal public, never mind whoever they are protesting against. Okay, that's all I wish to say for this video blog, the first video blog I've mentioned the upcoming royal wedding. I think I'll uh, post more videos about the royal wedding uh, closer to the time. Until next time, it's bye for now. Bye bye. And those are the words of Chris Williams from Pembroke Dock in Wales, the United Kingdom. Well, Chris, you're certainly entitled to your opinions. We appreciate your note. And so that's Chris Williams. Uh, that uh, from Chris, and uh, he certainly didn't pull any punches. My name is